My question is, as a dissident from Hong Kong, knowing that I cannot express freely in Hong Kong or in the UK without risking other people in trouble, I also know that you just now made claims about there's free speech in China, and it's possible to criticize the Chinese government just now again. Can you please demonstrate that free speech and tell us what are Xi Jinping's two worst mistakes in the past five years? Great question. If you can demonstrate to us that it's okay to criticize Xi Jinping, the Chinese government, and China, or even just say Xi Jinping kind of resembles Winnie the Pooh, would be good enough for me. Thank you. Authoritarian, dictatorial, Orwellian surveillance state, emperor for life, a living hell. That's how China and its government are often described to me in the comment section of my videos, usually by people who have never set foot in the country and only get their ideas about China by listening to YouTubers who have left the country nearly 10 years ago and lie for a living or by parroting lies from cult whose only purpose is to help three-letter agencies overthrow the Chinese government or even worse by repeating what media, politicians and pundits tell them is happening in China, yet they do not trust those organizations, those people, when it comes to their own country's affairs. Hello, my name is Fernando and welcome to another video just to let you know that I post this content in Spanish as well. So there's a link in the title if you want to send this to someone who doesn't understand English. Thank you. So let's just start by doing something interesting, reading the Chinese constitution in English. There is a link in the description down below for you to go see it. It's chapter 2, article 35 it says, Citizens of the People's Republic of China shall enjoy freedom of speech, the press, assembly, association, procession, and demonstration. So, it's there. It's in the Constitution. Their article regarding rights of the citizens. Now, are there examples of citizens exercising their right? Just watch here as I talk. There are people saying things that they dislike about this, about that. People protesting when they feel that they've been wronged by their government. People demanding change, like during the 2022 COVID um, at the end of that year, after that Urumqi fire that took place. You saw all that in the media, didn't you? Media that covers accidents and terrible things that happens. People on social media demanding explanations or expressing dissatisfaction. Here's a quick reminder though. There is no anonymity online in China. Yet these people feel they have enough freedom to go online and do this. If you are on Chinese social media like Douyin or Weibo, you see it daily. Because, yeah, well, China is a great place. There are things that happen. China is imperfect. But things get voiced and things get fixed. Just like in the previous video that I showed you. That 12345 hotline, which is a nationwide thing. Each city has its own number and its own office. And it is the duty of whoever is picking up the phone to follow up on your claim, on your case, until that case is closed. That 12345 hotline was built upon the Constitution of China. And let's watch here again, same chapter, chapter 2, Article 41. Citizens of the People's Republic of China shall have the right to criticize and make suggestions regarding any state organ or state employee. I have the right to file with relevant state organ complaints, charges, or reports against any state organ or state employee for violations of the law or dereliction of duty. But they shall not, and this is important, <laughs> listen, they shall not fabricate or distort facts to make false accusations. And this is going to be very important when we talk about freedom of speech. There are certain things that you can't not say. So no, it is not true that there is no freedom of speech in China. As Mr. Gao said, there is freedom of speech. Like all freedoms, though, they must be guardrails. Again, please do watch last week's video about freedom and democracy in China and the US after we're done here. So let's talk about what those things are. What is not okay? Basically, there's three things. First is disclosing national security secrets or information. I'm sure that there's nobody out there that has any issues about this particular one. Now, the question is, what constitutes national security threats? China seems to be pretty normal and pretty rational about this. You can see the list right here on the screen. Now, what about America? Well, they don't look so normal. <laughs> this garlic is a national security threat. Cranes are a national security threat. TikTok, fentanyl, a drug that is used in hospitals worldwide without any issues, but in America, they can seem to have it under control. There's also sanctions. Sanctions 
are a national security threat to America. And by sanctions, I mean retaliatory sanctions that China imposes on the U.S. after the U.S. has imposed sanctions on China. And, well, there's also PhD students and scientists that are national security threats, as you can see here, Felix. Uh, that was horrible. But what else is not? What else is not okay? There's two more things. Again, reading from the Constitution, anything that disrupts public order and any, um, any piece of information that fabricates or distorts facts. So, let's look at this example by Falun Gong or this new Tang Dynasty and Epoch Times reporter Jennifer Jen. Back in September of 2022, she published a rumor that Xi Jinping had been arrested and removed from office. That wasn't true. <laughs> you all can tell that he's still in office. She deleted the tweet, but there's a link in the description as well to an archive of that tweet so that you can go check it out and make sure that I'm not lying to you. By the way, she has blocked me because I've shown several times that she lies. So that's lie number one. She didn't peek at in the post. But she also reported in another tweet, in another, she tweets a lot, <laughs> that according to her Falun Gong leader, 400 million people had died during COVID. Yet the country apparently continues to operate like nothing has happened. The economy continues to grow. Exports continue to grow. But the best part about what she claims is that nobody protested. 400 million people died of COVID and nobody protested. But 10 people died in Urumqi during a, a, a COVID, during a, a fire, and the whole country erupted in protests that you all saw. Does that make any sense? Do you believe that 400 million Chinese people died of COVID? Of course not. And the thing is that to support her reporting, she actually filmed inside a funeral home in Beijing at the peak of COVID, and she showed just a few body bags. Watch, watch my debunk here for a moment. That Jennifer Zheng recently reported that according to their founder, their leader of the Falun Gong, Mr. Li Hongzi, 400 million Chinese died from COVID since 2020. 400 million. That is more than the entire population of the United States. Let that number become an image in your brain. 400 million Chinese people died of COVID in three years and nobody noticed. Jennifer Zheng is an ambulance chaser who gets footage from inside funeral homes, for example. Is that ethical? Okay, that's debatable. But what does she show? 20 or 30 body bags waiting to be cremated in Beijing during the highest peak of COVID. So I speak to you, Mr. or Mrs. Speaker at the IRF Summit. Do you know how many people die in China of natural causes each year? Around 10 million. Do you know the death rate in Beijing in 2019? That's pre-pandemic. That's 5.49 per thousand, as you can see here. At 21 million in population, that means 115,000 deaths per year or 315 deaths a day in Beijing alone. That is normal pre-pandemic. And Jennifer shows you 20, 30, 50 body bags. And that's supposed to be news? So listen, I could be here all day telling you about Falun Gong, but I hope that you're starting to understand. This is for people who, who are not aware of who Falun Gong are. Falun Gong and all of its branches are simply entities that are dead set on disturbing China's progress and stability and hopefully be able to overthrow the Communist Party of China. Watch here from MSNBC, if you don't believe me and you'd rather believe your own media. So there is this group called Falun Gong, and they run this thing called the Epoch Times. If you are over, but based on ad targeting, if you're over 50 on Facebook, you probably got one of these ads. They are, I would say, pretty much everywhere. And their end goal of the spiritual group is to bring about a judgment day that will pit communists and communists to hell and anyone who's uh, sympathetic to them to heaven. But when you look behind it, you see it's nonprofit. So the Falun Gong has several media arms. One is the Epoch Times, which is this. One is um, NDTV, which is uh, their television production company, which they make tons of um, weird interviews and, and they do YouTube shows. And then the other is Shen Yun, which if you've ever been anywhere, you've seen these ubiquitous um, advertisements for a dance troupe that looks like a traditional. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes this them. is actually 
aligned with them as well. So that's their media arm. Really, this is a decades old uh, media arm of a ch anti-Chinese government um, propaganda outlet. And so usually the people that are working there are just Falun Gong volunteers. So they're people that practice the religion or the spiritual movement and they also work for the paper. They, that's part of their spirituality. They have to volunteer their time there. But one of the uh, former reporters said that it was almost like a Russian troll farm. And to top this, Bill Guan, the chief financial officer, has been found guilty of laundering at least $67 million in fraud proceeds. That is how Falun Gong, Epoch Times, became the third most visited right-wing outlet in the U.S. They even make movies now, as you can see. So do yourself a favor before we move on. Just don't listen to these people. There's Lay's Real Talk, China Insider with David Dung, China Uncensored with Chris Chappell, anything that is NTD TV or New Time Dynasty TV or the Epoch Times, especially those Epoch Times accounts on X or Twitter that target uninformed audiences like, I hope you're not, but they're farming followers by posting cute videos on their all and every highly viewed post. They try to make them related to. So beware of those. Now, let us move on then. Now, my biggest gripe with this talking point from the West about China not having freedom of speech is how bad things are in the West when it comes to freedom of speech. We've all seen the situation in the UK. We have seen the Crown Prosecution Service tweeting on August 8th, thing before you post. Content that incites violence or hatred isn't just harmful, it can be illegal. And I know that I'm making that voice, but doesn't that sound like Chapter 2, Article 41 of the Chinese Constitution? Quite similar, no? <laughs> now, when it comes to America, please hear me once and hear me always. Your sacred freedom of speech is like throwing a bone to a dog to keep him distracted. 